Today's topic is appreciating each child. We're going to be talking about how to meet the self-actualization and self-esteem needs of each and every single one of our students. In order to be able to do this, teachers need to come to respect, acknowledge, and appreciate each child as an individual. By meeting a child's self-actualization and self-esteem needs, we empower them to have a more positive image of themselves. We encourage them to take risks, to overcome challenges, and to face uncertainties with confidence. Children are most successful in the classroom when their interests, their background, and their preferences are taken into consideration. If you want to motivate a child to learn, ask them what they're interested in. If they're interested in bugs, take on a unit about bugs. If they're interested in robots, design your entire curriculum about the inner workings of robots. There are so many ways to engage your students in projects that both interest them and also meet your academic standards. Create a classroom where children learn to appreciate their own uniqueness and also the uniqueness of their peers. Highlight their temperaments, their strengths, their ways of learning. Encourage them to value who they are as an individual, their culture, their language, their heritage. We develop this sense of self in early childhood. It's where we discover our values, our attributes, our abilities that define who we are as a person. Young children come to understand who they are through the context of their families and friends and even their peers at school. This is why it's so important for us to provide positive experiences that help shape children into who they are. Children need a sense of belonging and acceptance. They need secure attachments with their teachers, and they need to feel trust in the relationships that they have. When children's safety and security needs are met, they develop confidence to overcome challenges, to take risks, to explore, and to problem solve. This is why the relationships that we develop with them are so crucial to their success. Children are active participants in the learning environment, so give them opportunities to make choices. In this way, we help them develop a sense of autonomy. Autonomy is self-directing freedom and especially moral independence. When you're working with infants, make sure that you respond to their needs. Infants develop this sense of trust once they know their needs will be met. Even in infancy, we can help encourage them to become individuals and distinguish themselves from their peers. Use their names and the names of their family members when you're talking about their pictures. Hold them and give them one-on-one -on -one attention. Hang mirrors on the wall so they can see themselves as they explore and play and allow them to bring in special things from home that are just for them. Blankets, toys, favorite books, and even family photo albums. If you're working with toddlers, give them opportunities to build independence and practice self-help skills. Give them the chance to observe their peers and to play with them and to talk to them. Post documentation of their learning, including artwork and even photographs of what they're doing within your classroom walls. Preschoolers can even create all about me books that have photos from home and pictures of all their favorite things. They can create portfolios that has documentation of all their learning and all their progress so that they can see how they've grown and developed throughout the year. You can even have preschoolers make charts of all their favorite foods and books and toys. This helps them both distinguish themselves as an individual and also find commonalities with their peers. In this lesson, we're also gonna be talking about the idea of nature versus nurture. Though historically these ideas were thought to be distinctive in nature, new research actually suggests that they are complementary. Instead of thinking nature versus nurture, now we believe it to be nature through nurture. That both biological factors and societal influences impact the development and growth of a young child. As a teacher, we need to become aware of both the genetic and environmental influences that are impacting our young children's development because all of these factors contribute to the child's sense of self. Consider the way gender influences a child's development. 
By the age of three, most children know whether they are boys or girls and start to assign roles based on gender. This can sometimes include assigning different stereotypes to toys in your classroom. So be sure to provide a variety of toys that are for everyone to play with. Provide dress up for both genders, dolls for both genders, books for both genders. Sometimes children will experiment with toys that may seem inappropriate to you. One year when I was teaching, I had a little boy who loved to put on princess dresses. His father was really concerned that this was gonna impact his development. I assured him that a little boy who wants to wear a princess dress today might wanna be a puppy the next day. And he's not going to actually grow up and become a puppy. Children learn about their environment through play, so let them experiment with different gender roles. So have a welcoming attitude for little girls who are wanting to work in the woodworking area or little boys who want to play dress up. The toys in our classroom are not meant to divide us, but to bring us together. It's also important to consider your child's temperament. Their temperament is the way that they approach and react to the world around them. It influences not only their behavior, but also the interactions that they have with their environment. Temperaments are influenced both by nature, so their biological factors, as well as through nurture, so the outside circumstances that impact them. We've all seen different temperaments with different children. <laughs> Some are easygoing, they're flexible, they're laid back. Others can be difficult, they're extremely active or rambunctious, or everything that happens is a fight. Some kiddos are cautious and careful, while others are completely reckless and don't have a fear in the world. Some kiddos are easily distracted, while others are focused and driven. Some children are completely independent, while others need your constant support and encouragement. By understanding your child's temperament, you can create stronger connections with them. You can build better trust with them and just become a better overall teacher to them. For example, if you have a child who's easily distracted, give them their own little private corner of the room, free of distractions, a place they can focus and learn. Consider their strengths and challenges and play to their areas of interest. Consider their family background and how those circumstances might be impacting their development. Consider their language, their culture, their socioeconomic status. Consider whether or not they are facing domestic violence or special circumstances like a parent's divorce or separation, homelessness, or even death in the family. It's important for you to know what's going on in their lives so that you can appropriately support them. For example, a child who is acting out or becoming more infantile in your classroom might have just had a new sibling arrive at home or a child whose native language is not English at home may need extra support in reading and writing. And never make assumptions about what's going on in a child's life because things at home can change suddenly and drastically. In order to stay in tune with what's going on at home, you can always observe your children, have conversations with them, and keep great relationships with their parents and families. Conduct home visits and conference with parents regularly in order to discuss the child's development. Create an inclusive environment so that all children in your classroom feel welcome. Avoid terms like mommy and daddy or even parents and instead use more inclusive terms like family. For show and tell, have students talk about an experience that they've had or a piece of work that they've made themselves rather than bringing in something from home. This helps de-emphasize material possessions and includes learners from all socioeconomic statuses so that no one feels left out. Include books that help children through tough situations at home. And reassure children who have survived violence or abuse that those circumstances were not their fault. Never dismiss a child's rational or irrational fears. If they're afraid of a monster coming after them, they really are afraid. They're not pretending. Both of these types of fears are the same to a child. Help them overcome these fears in small, manageable doses. For example, if you have a child who's afraid of spiders, 
introduce them to a book about a friendly spider. Have them draw a picture of a spider doing something silly, and then go outside and see one in nature. Sometimes things aren't as scary when they're introduced in small doses. In this lesson, we're also going to be talking about Carol Dweck's fixed and growth mindsets. A fixed mindset is something like, I'm smart or I'm stupid, and there's nothing I can do to change that. Growth mindsets are focused on the process rather than the product. To encourage a student with a growth mindset, you can give them phrases like, I saw you working so hard on that task. Or, maybe you haven't mastered it yet, but keep trying. Emphasize hard work rather than perfection. In this way, we help them to learn from their mistakes rather than give up. This encourages resilience. Resilience is the ability to recover from or adjust easily from misfortune or change. In order to build resilience, focus on their effort, not the product. Encourage them with phrases like, you worked hard on that, didn't you? Point out the progress that they've made over time. And give control back to the child by asking them how they feel like they did. Learning is a process, even for teachers. So have patience with yourself. Enjoy your students and appreciate them for who they are and what they bring to the table every single day. You have a bigger impact than you know. So take advantage of it.